Hello, Chill Computer Guy. Today we're in Bitwig 2.0. We are going to take a look at more of the modulators. Uh, this time we're going to take a look at the LFOs. Now there's basically three versions of the LFO. I think there's 25 different modulators and I'm probably going to, as far as my favorites are concerned, as far as the one, my go-to modulators, I'm probably only going to have, you know, maybe five or six main go-to modulators that I'm going to use here in Bitwig Studio. But everybody has different ways of working and so it's great to have in this case, three versions of an LFO. Uh, let's start off with the LFO, just plain LFO. I'm gonna open it up. And uh, the LFO is much like the uh, envelopes. They, if you right click, you can do a per voice. Meaning that this one by default is just a regular LFO, but if you click per voice, every time you hit a key, it's gonna re-trigger the LFO specific to that particular note. I'll show you that in an example and here in a little bit. So what I'm going to do, much like the uh, the envelopes, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, modulate the center of the, uh, the tone wheel there on the organ. Just a real simple way to see. If I hit middle C, you can see there's my LFO. Now uh, there's two values here. This is going to be a uh, divider of this particular uh, uh, settings. So this is one hertz. So if I go to kilohertz, then obviously it's 1000 hertz, which is extremely fast. Now if I go to bar, this represents, now the LFO is one bar long. So the cycle is one bar. If I go into second, that's going to be a half a bar or a half note. If I go into fourth, that's going to be a fourth of a bar or basically quarter notes. Eighth is going to be an eighth of a bar or an eighth note. Sixteenth is going to be a sixteenth note. And thirty-two is going to be a thirty-second note. Now, these only apply to if this is 1.0. So let's go back to a bar here. So this is one bar. So it's going to be 1.0 of whatever this value is. So if I set this to 0.5, now the LFO cycles two bars long. And if I set it to 2.0, now the LFO cycle is half a bar or a half note. And so that's that's the, the way these numbers work in relation to whatever you have pulled down to. So using that, you can create pretty much any speed you want with this LFO but basing it on uh, like kilohertz, for example, is extremely fast, but if you slow that down, you, know, you get some pretty, pretty interesting effects there. So let's go ahead and put this back on 1.0 and hertz. So we'll go with, a, actually let's go with a two, let's go with half note. So this is gonna be a half note LFO. Okay, now below that we're going to have, these are basically saw waves, but they're, uh, this is a saw wave here and then a reverse saw wave. So it, if you take a look over here, you can kind of see what's going on with that as I turn it. You get a reverse sawtooth kind of effect. If we go the other way with it. We have kind of a drop-off effect and so you can go anywhere in between there if you double click it's going to return it to the default and then here more of a sine wave and if you go the other way this is kind of a pointed sine wave and then uh, over here this is going to be a delay so if you turn this up Now this delay is based on, you need to re-trigger a key. So if you're holding down a key and you adjust the delay, it's not gonna do anything. So what you basically need to do is set the delay and then trigger a note. Now if you watch here in this display, you'll see that the white uh, dot represents where you're at in the cycle of the LFO. So as I hit down on a key, you'll see there's gonna be a delay before it falls into that cycle. See that? 
the delay only happens when you trigger the LFO. There's no way to actually loop this delay, unfortunately. I'm, I don't know if that's going to be something that will be added in the future. So if you turn this way up, you can get a better kind of sense if you watch the, uh, the dot again. See, so that delay eclipses the cycle of the LFO. So you can see, and this is a this is not an arbitrary value. You can actually see this represents seconds. So you can have up to an eight second delay. But again, that only works when you trigger the note. And you'll actually see that actually come into effect when you go to a per voice LFO. You'll see this having more of an effect. Now to the right here is, uh, is your fade in. So again, this is gonna only have effect when you trigger a note. And if you watch the white dot again, you can see it fades in here. So very similar to the delay, but this is a slow, slow effect. So if you turn this up, let's say to one second, it fades in. If you turn this up to one second, it's a full delay and then all of a sudden it clicks on. So two similar effects, it's a delay and a ramp up. Now again, you can go polar unipolar here. And if you reset this, now to delete the, the modulation, you just right click on whatever effect the modulation's on. And then you just hit the X. Let's take this up halfway and modulate this from here. And so you can see now it's going into the negative. Now this dial right here is the intensity of the LFO. And you can see this again, if you look at the white dot, you can see that it's not really following that saw, that uh, triangle very well. It's kind of drifting around a little bit. If I turn this up, it's gonna follow it exactly. As I turn this down, it's going to drift off that line. And then, of course, we have this double arrow, which I still don't know what that does. Uh, you can sync this. You have a phase control, a sync. Uh, the poly would just mean you can have more than that basically what that did is by hitting poly there you you clicked on per voice so um, so if you right click and hit per voice it's basically the same as hitting poly here so it's two ways of doing the same thing so if you click on poly it's gonna do the per voice LFO and then if you see each key I hit is going to represent is going to be represented by the the white dot and so you can see we can have a little bit of an offset here. So again that's kind of how that LFO works. You can adjust your shape here. You can adjust your sawtooth reverse sawtooth there, your sine wave to your pointy sine wave. You can adjust a delay or a fade in for the LFO. This is the LFO intensity. You can go unipolar. And then poly is basically the same as right clicking and doing a per voice LFO. Just like the envelopes, you can have more than one key come in at a time. And then all of those keys will follow that LFO. which in my opinion is a, a really kind of a really cool way to put a different swing on the, the LFO. So clicking on the poly, you can do more than one note. Of course, if you turn that off, it's just a traditional LFO. Gertie Mag type of thing.
Next up, we have the classic LFO. Now, this is the LFO that is going to be closest to the LFO you're used to from the original Bitwig Studio. If we open this up here, you'll see that we have our free, which we can set the, uh, the hertz. We have our beats, quarter notes, 32 to 1, all the way up to 164th note. Um, and then we have our dotted notes and then our triplets. And then we have all of our waveforms here. We have the sine wave, the square wave, the uh, sawtooth, the triangle, the reverse sawtooth, random, a couple of random waveforms here. Uh, we have the amount, the intensity of the LFO, the phase of the LFO, and then a uh, bipolar um, on and off, note trigger, and per voice. So these are two very handy things. Now this per voice is going to be the exact same as if you right click and hit it here. It's just a, basically a shortcut. If you click per voice, it's the same exact thing. And uh, this LFO is probably the one I would find myself using the most just because it's the most, uh, it just has the most options for just basic LFO. This is probably what I would use for just classic LFO type things. Now I'm going to go ahead and modulate that uh, center tone wheel of the organ. Get that going. And again, not, not much going on here. It's just an LFO, you know, uh, nothing too fancy. Now the nice thing about this uh, particular uh, LFO is you can cause like a little bit of curve on there, you know, so you can create your own. Double click to reset it, and then of course it's uh, bipolar, so if you just want to go positive, just positive, this is going to be positive and negative. In other words, if I... Uh, get rid of that modulation and then I uh, modulate from here to here you can see because we're unipolar we're going into negative values as well so that's our base so we're going positive and negative and the phase is just where the LFO starts and where it ends and then the amount is the intensity of the LFO. Now note trigger means it will reset the LFO every time I hit a key. It's easier to see this if we slow it down. Let's go to a bar. So every time I hit a key it's going to start at the beginning of the LFO. As opposed to if that's not if the note trigger is not on, then it's just going to start the key. The cycle of the LFO is not going to be affected by the key you hit. Now the per voice, like I say, you can right click and get it here, is basically going to mean that every time you hit a key, it's going to reset the LFO and then it's going to play those keys in unison with the LFO. So pretty interesting effect. If you play a chord, you hit all three keys at the same time. And so that's the uh, that's the classic LFO. Like I say, it's probably the most useful LFO just because it has everything you need: uh, the per voice, the note trigger, the bipolar, the phasing, uh, the amount of the LFO. The uh, you know it has your your free, your your note, your uh, your dotted note, your, your triplets, and then uh, all your LFO shapes, and then you can also do some fine adjusting to the curve as well. So that's the uh, classic LFO.
Next up, we have the uh, beat LFO. Now, the beat LFO is an interesting one. I'm going to go ahead and modulate that center tone wheel again. Now, the beat LFO is basically an LFO with a shuffle, a rate. I don't know what this rate is based on, so that's a little troubling. Minus three, so is that three bars? You could turn the shuffle off and on. So as far as I can tell, this LFO is just basically uh, based on you have a shuffle, you have arbitrary note values, and then you have this uh, offset. And it's bipolar, of course. Uh, and then you have a depth of the LFO. So it's, it's basically a rhythmic LFO. I would use it to, um, to modulate something in time with maybe uh, a bass line or a drum beat or something. Um, not the most useful LFO in my opinion, but I suppose that uh, if you want to modulate something on beat, this might not be a bad direction to go. Again, it feels uh, a little uh, kind of half done. Like you can apply a groove, but I'm not really... Anyway, that's the Groove LFO. Not too excited about that. I don't know if that's going to be on my uh, my most used list, but that's the Beat LFO. Just a single LFO. So this is a single LFO. There's no way to do per voice. It's just a single voice LFO. Anyway, so uh, that's it, the three LFOs here in Bitwig 2. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm going to do some more modulators coming up, so uh, please subscribe so you don't miss out on those. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.